So welcome everybody. Uh, for those of you, if this is your first time, my name is Kathy Nelson. I'm the CEO and founder of The Photo Managers. And we do this every month for a few years now. You can actually see past ones on YouTube. We finally got a YouTube channel, which Lucas has a great YouTube channel that he's had for a long time, but we have one now where what's amazing is you can go back and listen to different people from different walks of life who share their experience of helping people manage their photos and videos. And I always ask the same five questions just to keep it consistent. And it's always just a really engaging conversation. So that we leave time for Q&A. So go ahead and um, put them in the chat. We'll probably wait until the end when we'll ask your questions of Lucas. But um, so I'm thrilled to invite Lucas here today. So Lucas, welcome. Tell us, uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. And we're dropping your information there in the, in the chat for people who want to follow you and things. Yeah, awesome. Um... My name is Lucas. I'm the CEO, the president of Mac and Home Consulting. Um, so what that means is most of the days I'm sitting at my computer here answering people's text messages and questions about uh, their their Mac problems. You know, they lost a password. They need a password reset. Their email's not not working. You know, they need help fixing their email. Um, but, and of course, got into photos, and we'll we'll talk about that. Um, but I'm also, I'm a dad. I have a 16 month old, uh, somebody else in the photo managers group said danger toddler. Uh, I have a danger toddler. He's now, he's learning how to jump off things, which is a treat uh, for the parents. Um, and I have a YouTube channel and I love, I love making videos. I love teaching. Uh, my, my YouTube channel is growing steam. I feel very sort of small in the YouTube world. You know, I get about, I think last I checked about 3000 views a day on the, sort of the whole the whole channel but like i want to get to the you know the hundreds of thousands i want to get to the millions i want to i want to see what it's like you're not competitive at all lucas with your wordle score and then your, your right. YouTube, but <laughs> <laughs> we got to learn something about you here <laughs> yeah. but uh but i love uh i love helping people i love teaching i'm, I'm a mac guy like i I, i'm not joking I'll, i can send a photo later but i have an apple logo tattoo on my upper back um and uh I, i'm just mac apple through and through and i love to to share knowledge and teach and all of that stuff wow that's fascinating well tell us a little bit so i always start but just tell us well, tell us about your journey how you came to be uh help you know be a member of the photo managers and helping people with their photos but obviously not just photos since you do everything and you know i'm curious yeah. about that tattoo now that you mentioned that like yeah. old were you? <laughs> did your mother know? I mean, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. About yourself. it was in the tattoo was in my motorcycle phase. So I was about 26 years old. Uh, I had a, a t-shirt that I loved that had a mermaid that goes over the, the shoulder. And so I wanted that as, as a tattoo, but I was like, man, I should put an Apple logo right in the tail of the, of the mermaid. And so that's what, that's what it is. I ended up doing it. I waited for a couple of years before I got the tattoo. And um, I think my mom knew, but of course she was dismayed. Uh, but she was more she was more dismayed about the motorcycle than the tattoo. But yeah, uh, I bet. Yeah, I, bet. I would go with that too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my my background, um, I really I'm I'm a com I'm a computer guy. I'm a Mac guy. You know, so um, I got my first Mac in high school. My mom bought it for me just so that I would do my homework on it and to help me with school. I almost failed school because of my Mac. I was going home to tinker, you know, and, and play with it all the time. Um, I worked in a Mac shop um, before the Apple stores existed. I, I sold, uh, I was a salesperson. I sold computers in a store in Vancouver called Mac Station. Um, and my, my, my work there, people always came back to me because I would just give them the straight info. I would, I was the salesperson who was never, I was never pushy. I would always say, these are your options. You know, even if the options are shitty, shittier and shittiest, these are your three options, you know, take it as, take it or leave it. Um, people would come back and buy from me. Um, eventually somebody asked me to go to their house and set up their computer for them. And I was like, absolutely, I will, I will do that. Um, and they said, well, what do you charge? And I was like, you, wait, what? You can make money going to someone's house and, you know, setting up a computer. And so they, so I said, well, I don't, I don't know how much do you normally pay for something like that? And uh, they said, well, 60 bucks an hour is kind of the going rate. And I said, well, this is my first time, so I'll do it for half that, 30 bucks an hour. They just assumed it was going to be, you know, I assumed I would be going half the speed of, of whoever else. Um, and so 
that got me into really going to people's homes, setting up Macs, you know, selling computers, all of that stuff. Um, I worked at uh, Net Nation and Hostway for about six years. That was domain name, web hosting, email, tech support. So basically people who have a website or people who have email, they have problems, they call, they need to register a domain name, a .com or a .ca, whatever. They have problems with that, they call. Um, that got me the really high volume tech support. Like we, we had hundreds, thousands of people needing help and had to get really quick at helping people with their problems, essentially doing tech support. Um, during that time, while I was at Net Nation and Hostway, I was doing the in-home computer stuff, helping people with their Macs and setting up their computers, um, doing sort of evenings and weekends. People would drop their Mac off to me in the after work and they would pick it up early the next morning. And like overnight, I had just totally overhauled and, you know, set up their Mac for them and that kind of thing. Um, and basically Mac and home, my, my company now, it was, I was just getting busier and busier uh while while having a day job i was getting busier and busier doing the sort of moonlighting mac help type stuff and i eventually hired a team um at, at our peak we had 21 21 consultants uh and three full-time um now i've got a much more enjoyable and manageable size of six consultants so it's me and and six people um and just Stay the same, like just being people, being your Mac guy, you need help with Mac things, we come to you, we, we solve the problems. Um, and then I got into making YouTube videos about five years ago, and I made a video about something that I love, which is photos and organizing my photos and shortcuts for how to organize photos. Um, and that video did really well. But there was something interesting about that video compared to the other ones, because it got I think only about 100 is still at about 120,000 views. Like it's not in the millions, like it's not a really viral, you know, anything. Um, but at the end of that video, I made a list of these are all the things that, that I can help you with. After, you know, after you watch this video, if, if you need more help, these are the things that I can help you with. That one turned into a ton of work. This, and this was also during COVID. So it was remote work. So people were like, you know, all over the world, watch the video, how to organize your photos, they get to the end of the video, and they're like, shit, this guy can, can help me with my photos. And so they started to book with me. And I set up online booking like Calendly, so that they could just pay online and book online. And, and it just really, I almost I started to specialize in photo stuff and get really good at photo stuff just by by virtue of tons of people asking questions about it. Um, so I think that's kind of where I'm at now. I've made a bunch more videos about about uh, photo stuff, and I love it. I love I love being able to like put some content out there and have you know hundreds or thousands of people watch it and, and change some lives. It's really, especially with photos, it's super super rewarding. Yeah, that's amazing. I love your your story. Sounds so much like mine, but on a different level. Where when somebody asked me to help them, um, I was just helping people get their memory, their photos from their memory cards to their computers before the iPhone. And, and a friend said, well, what do you charge per hour to help me with that? And I was like, charge you. Like, I would pay you. <laughs> you what? Charge, what? So it's like, I tell that you story. You can make often. money like, this way? I, like, oh, I don't know. What, you know. Uh, first, I kept saying, no, 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 because you're my friend. But then I said, yes. But so tell us. Um, so what So what I love about your story, and we hear this so many times in everybody's stories. Uh, is the is this progression of where you start somewhere and you end up in this in a different kind of field? So, what advice would you give to people that are listening, maybe that are newer in the photo organizing, photo management field, or are considering it as a business? Um, what advice yeah. do you give to people that are thinking about starting a business? Yeah, I I made some I made some notes. I had some ideas. Um, some of the things that helped me the most. I am uncomfortable. I get, I still now get like super nervous about meetings like this. Like my heart was pounding. I'm like going to be in front of so many people and ah, you know, I'm going to be talking about me and my life and all this stuff. And, and I think that stuff is scary and we avoid it. And it's so much easier to stay home and, and stay behind the computer and, and that kind of thing. So like the first thing, one of the things that helped me and helped my business the most was joining BNI, like a business networking structure, where it's like every week you show up to this networking meeting, you have to be there or you have consequences, you know, you get a strike. And if you get the strike, then it's bad because you can get kicked out of the group, blah, blah, blah. But like BNI for me was fantastic because you, every meeting, you have to do a 60 second pitch. You have to stand up in front of 30 people 
and do a, a little 60 second presentation presentation but it's like fast 60 seconds goes by really quickly so you, you do these like you know short little uh elevator pitches or infomercials and i did that for i think five or six years in the beginning of you know, like in the beginning of doing just mac and home when i quit my day job and i was doing just mac and home i was i was in networking or business networking type thing so that was huge and like even just needing to talk to like to walk up to people like put yourself into an environment where it is worse to just stand there awkwardly in the corner you know and th that it, that your only option is to like walk up to somebody and shake their hand and you know introduce yourself and try to practice your elevator pitch and get in front of people um so especially now like sort of post covid uh look for meetups you know look for for bnis like try to get in front of people um so that's one thing i would also say it takes time like i'm now i'm 15 years into doing just mac and home and it's only in the last like three or four years that i'm like whoa things are things are good here like i'm 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 making a good rate i'm profitable uh you know we have a good groove I, i'm i'm able to focus on the work that i like um so be be kind to yourself be patient you know it, it's not quick uh, so that's something and for, for my my videos um there's there was a huge gap between how i look on camera like in, in, when i first started making videos how i am in my head i was so much more awesome in my head than i was on camera in, and I was like horrified when I see how I look on camera. So I hired help. I got a coach who's like, you know, her, her tagline was she helps you shine online. Her name was Jenny Beck and she, and she like just helps get your, you know, your energy up and you have to be smiling. You have to smile so much more than you think you need to smile, <laughs> you know, all of this stuff. And, and so I got, you know, a lot of help with that. And it's only in the last two years that I'm like, wow, I actually feel good about the videos that I'm putting online, you know? So it's, it's just hard and uncomfortable and awkward in the beginning. Um, oh, I wrote here, do it wrong a hundred times. Uh, whenever I teach people how to drive stick shift, I tell them you're, you're going to stall a hundred times. Mm -hmm. that, that's not, it's not up for debate. You are going to stall a hundred times. It is going to be at the worst moment. You're going to be on a hill. There's going to be a line of people behind you. They're going to be honking at you. That's coming. And so get those stalls out of the way as quickly as possible, you know, and then that, then, then it'll be easier after that. Uh, it's exactly the same for, for a business. Like I did a ton of cold calls, um, uh, like I just picking up the phone and cold calling businesses around here for, for max support. Uh, one of my, one of my best failures, I guess, is, um, I called somebody and my, my pitch was, that if you have Mac in your business and you don't have in-house IT support, then I will bring you a lunch and learn. Like we'll come and do a lunch presentation. We'll bring you lunch. I'll show you some Mac shortcuts and some tips, no charge, no obligation, et cetera. And the woman said, uh, we don't, we don't have, we don't have Mac here. We only run windows. And I said, well, that's unfortunate. And she said, yeah, for you click. <laughs> So, so like it was one of my stalls and I wear that, you know, I wear that stall with pride. <laughs> like I don't, I don't say anymore. That's unfortunate, <laughs> so, but, but, uh, networking events, get help, like get coaches, get, you want to do YouTube videos, get somebody to help you with your demeanor on video. Like you just, there are people who specialize in, in those things. And I would say. You know, as, as much accountability structure as you can get, you know, as, as many networking groups, meetups as you can get, you know, get out there, get in front of people. Yeah, I agree. That's a, you know, BNI, I went to BNI meetings when I first got started, Chamber of Commerce meetings. It, it really is a uh, face to face makes a big difference and then slowly but surely, right? So, how, you yeah. know, how have you found your clients? You gave us some really good uh, insights about, you know, picking up the phone and calling and, and you know, but, um, but just in general, you know, from a marketing perspective, how did you, um, how do you go about that process? I'm sure it's different now at 15 years in the business than right when it wasn't when you first it's started. It's very but. different. Yeah, very different now. Now I don't do any, I don't need to do any networking anymore. I, I only get, we, we get new clients now just from my YouTube videos. I haven't done networking in probably five years or something like that. So it's really, now we're at a point where it's all word of mouth and YouTube videos. But in, in the beginning, 
the way I got new clients was by by going all the all the way to make the client super happy with my work and often that meant free you know free time i made i made a mistake and and my my mistakes were were funny ones because like i would set up somebody's computer perfectly and from my perspective i would set it up it's the perfect mac setup but then the client would be like where's i where's all my stuff like i don't know how to find anything here it's totally different how do i what did you do what did you do to my computer right so then i'm like oh shit there's a there's a gap between you know me doing the perfect computer setup and the client understanding that the computer setup that i did there's a big gap there so i'm like okay i need to teach them more or i need to do you know less change you know i, I need to change their mac less essentially <laughs> Um, and when I would make those mistakes, I would do the fixes, no charge. I would go, I would say my bad, I'm coming back. I'm going to, I'm going to go all the way to make this, this right. Um, what that turned into was a whole bunch of word of mouth referrals. People are like, this is the guy who helped with your computer stuff. He really knows Mac, but also if he screws it up, he'll come back and he'll fix it. No charge. And, and I think that's a little more rare in the. In, bus in business in general like if you just go all the way to fix the mistake and 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 i viewed it as my mistake if mm -hmm. i did not correctly address the client's uh, uh understanding like if i didn't teach them well enough it was my mistake i need to teach them better i need to explain something better i need to put something in the right place a little better for them um so wor word of mouth was i think the biggest way that i got new clients i got a lot from uh, bni from networking I actually got a ton of really good business clients from the cold calling. I would not have done a call. I was part of a, a goals and self development group. We had an accountability structure where you you know I would commit to doing two cold calls a day, and and having you know having consequences if I didn't do it. And uh, that that worked. Cold calls are hard. It's uncomfortable. It's scary. You get rejected. You know all that stuff, but but I got I got good at it, and I got kind of an internal sort of bull, bulletproof thing just from screwing it up all the different ways that you can possibly screw it up, and, and I just got more comfortable with with saying you know saying my pitch and 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 I just became genuinely interested. I would call people and be like, I actually I'm calling just to find out if you would need my service, and I I don't know if you need my service. You don't know if you need my service. We, we neither of us know and so we're going to find mm -hmm. out now I, I don't know if you have time to talk now but you know if now is a good time i can give you my pitch if you like my pitch then i'd love to you know help that kind of thing so it, i think just over time it became easier to just be genuinely curious about what people need or, or don't need yeah i love that that's a great yeah that's you know the idea that you're starting out not like I'm here to sell you, which I think is normally the way we try to start out, right? Because you're, yeah. you know, but the idea of, right, is it, do you really need the services I can provide? Let's have a conversation and find that out. I also like yeah. what you said about, um, you know, when getting it wrong, but in some ways, even with photo organizers, many, I see faces on here that are members and things too. I think people have learned to ask them. It can't be, but there's, there's a saying that people say, I forget it exactly. There's no same client, right? Like people want to access their photos in different ways and you have to yeah. find out how does the client really act? Do they look at their photos by day and year or are they more interested in seeing their photos more by theme? You know, we know what Apple, yeah. you know, like they, it's amazing, right? The more and more they keep putting little videos together and, and uh, one day I was at dinner with some guy the other night and he not at all tech and he said, oh my gosh, look, they made this video for me. And it's all just of me. It's a bunch <laughs> of video. It's a bunch of photos of me. I feel very narcissistic. <laughs> so, uh, so, so uh, but he was like, he was mesmerized by the idea that the iPhone had his photos library had suddenly put music to it and things like that. Um, yeah, I love. So anyway, that's I guess the, I'm speaking that's a little bit favorite, more. Out. Well, that's yeah. one of my favorite results of like when you do get all the photos into one library, into the photos library, and into iCloud, then you start to get these neat, you know, fun suggestions. Like I just had one this morning of playtime with my my son and it's beautiful like it's lovely to I, I have I don't even know I haven't checked but probably 150 or 200,000 photos or something just a, a bananas number of photos and to have the phone just suggest these memories from the last two years I, I love it I love that and I don't know like I'm, I, I, I sell that when I'm talking to people about 
getting their photos all into one library. I'm like, one of the things you get is these nice remind, you know, memory photos pop up and it's lovely. Um, all right, next question is, I always ask is, what do you love most about your job? Yeah, I, the first thing I put on my list here is the therapy aspect. Um, I, I, I grew up, my mom uh, uh, is, was a new age hippie, a self-proclaimed new age hippie. So, and it was just me and her, I was an only child and it was just her growing up. Um, she's currently a music therapist. And so, so I, I grew up with the, the language in the house was empathy, compassion, kindness, you know, um, all of that stuff. And, and my, some of my favorite work that I do with, with clients is like reassuring them that the chaos in your system is normal. Everybody has kids, just total shit show of file organization structure. Every single person I, I work with has that. And every single person I work with feels bad about that. And, and, and they I'm think like, they're the only one. And they think they they're, think they're the only one. one. They're like, right. they're like, I know, I know, I know. I shouldn't use the same password for everything in my system. I know it's horrible. Everybody tells me it's horrible. I'm like, nope, super normal. Everybody does that. Um, you know, I know, I know my desktop is a mess. Don't, please don't judge my desktop. And I'm like, nope, I have 743 things on my desktop. Your desktop is normal. Mine's normal. Everybody does that. Um, so the, I, I, I really like that sort of therapy aspect. I actually made a, a series of videos that I'm, it's, these are the videos that I'm most proud of. Um, it's the Mac Shame series. Uh, uh, photo Shame was one of them. I have, I have so many photos. I know I should delete some, and I just can't bring myself to delete them. You know, how many times have you heard people say that? Um, you know, my desktop is a mess. I use the same password for everything. Oh yeah, and, and it's five hundred and seven days since my last backup. I know what I am an awful, I am an awful person because. I have not backed up my computer in 507 days. And I'm like, no, you're not. Everybody does that. Let's find a backup system that works for your life. You know, let's find something that, that you don't need to think about and the backup just happens because nobody plugs in the hard drive. Literally nobody plugs in the hard drive to back up their computer. So, and that one, I actually, I actually read, I made a blog post for that, for uh, Mac Shame uh, and made a, a, bought a domain name, endmacshame.com. You go to endmacshame.com. It will take you to my blog post, and there's four videos there that that are. One of them is the photos video, the messy desktop, the passwords, and uh, oh, email. Email shame was another one. I have twenty six thousand emails in my inbox, and I, you know, it's too many. I'm like, nope, that's normal. We get a ton of emails. I can raise my so. hand for shame about every one of those things you just said. <laughs> even now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. But I'm like, because because now email, like back, yeah, sure. Fifteen years ago, we could file emails into folders. Everybody filed emails into folders fifteen years ago. That was when you would get three emails a day. Now we get seven seventeen hundred emails a day, and it's not does not feasible anymore. Um, I love teaching. You know, what do I love most about my job? Teaching. I love those moments where clients, I show clients something, some new shortcut or some new function on the Mac and they go, they go, whoa, like that's, that's going to change and fix my life. Um, yeah, but with fo photos in particular, a clean, I, I love one photos library in the photos app, syncing with iCloud, showing up perfectly on all the devices, but particularly the I want the places set up so that like the trips that they've been on, they all cluster nicely on the map. Um, I want the people set up so that like all the faces, their, their kids, their family, their loved ones are all tagged correctly. And, you know, photos is now starting to suggest more photos of the people. Um, I don't care if you have 700,000 photos. I just want you to be able to choose your, your favorites with the heart and, you know, put the, then you've got the favorites. Like that's, that's my my jam is really, yeah, getting all the getting all the photos into one place and then teaching people how to do the the people, the places, the albums, the favorites. I love that. Yeah, I love the fact that you start out with the therapy piece. So for those that are members here that were at conference or at virtual, the our keynote speaker Judy Weisner on uh, the psychology. I forget what Judy Weiser W E I S Judy Weiser. Yeah, Judy, -E Judy Weiser. Uh, yeah introduced me to Lucas. So when she, when I reached out to her about speaking, we, I've been in touch with her because she was in my book, but we, when we reconnected about speaking at the conference, the photo therapist, but she said, oh my gosh, you have to meet Lucas. And she sent an introduction. So, uh, so she Judy, Judy also, I think was either, to... yeah, Judy was either my first client or one of my first clients. And she just sent me an email from 20 years ago that I sent her 
where I was just, I was basically a, just a, an organizational disaster. I was dodging her emails. I was super slow getting back to her. I was like screwing up her work, you know, all this stuff. And, and this was in, you know, when I was like figuring my life out, I was the, the tattooed, you know, motorcycle party guy. Um, and she's, she stuck with me and she, she helped me and coached me. And, and I'm a, I'm a better man now from having Judy Weiser as my client. She's amazing. She's a character. Uh, so now I always say, you know what, you have to talk about what you like most, but you know, there's always a flip side to what we like. And I always want to have a realistic uh, conversation for people that are thinking of starting a business, those that are members or people that are, are in business. And so they don't feel bad that there's this dark side that they may not like. So for you, what is the part of the business that you don't find enjoyable? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the point now that I was the sort of administrative stuff or like the bookie, like I found a really good team for the bookkeeping. I'm bad at bookkeeping. I, I, I needed, and it, I had to go through like, I think three or four different bookkeepers to find a really awesome one that now they're great. You know, so that, that type of stuff, I, I dislike it and I have always disliked it, but I'm, I'm at a point now where, uh, you know, I found the right people to, to help with that. And it does, I had to, like I said, I had to go through a few. The, the thing I dislike the most right now, the thing I have the most trouble with is uh, my desire to be the, the hero, the, the help. I, I want to be your guy. I want to be the guy who solves all the problems. But then you ask me about stuff that I hate doing, like uh, Microsoft Exchange, like a server, administrator, a server administration stuff with Microsoft Exchange, printers. I'm great. I hate printers. <laughs> I hate printers so much. If I could just say, I will never help you. I, Mac and Home will do everything for you except printers and Microsoft <laughs> Exchange. I hate that, but I feel compelled to do it because I have the like sort of need, need to be helpful hero, computer hero guy. Um, so that internal struggle is, is hard for me. Uh, you know, probably what it would require is just having, I just need to, to outsource the printers. I'd be like, oh yeah, no, I've got the perfect person for that. Here, he's the printer guy. That's the Microsoft Exchange guy over there. Um, so that that's hard because I, I I will I will do it, but I hate it. Um, <laughs> uh, and also, um, uh, char like it's still hard for me to charge what I'm worth. I have a whole bunch of um, clients that are like my sort of long ago Lucas only clients that that I've helped forever that are at 165 an hour. Our current rate is 195 an hour. It's uncomfortable. It's hard to, you know, raise the rates. I'm afraid of losing them as a client. Um, so I, I do it little by little. It's hard. Uh, mm -hmm. So that 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 part is is hard. Like like basically anything where I might I might potentially lose the client or lose the relationship if I charge my you know our current going rate kind of thing. Um, so I I give discounts where I would rather not. <laughs> I'm sure. Most people on this call could relate to that uh, that feeling and that experience. And for, actually, for those of you that are members or not, you can even look Profitability Live. Lucas will actually be one of our key, uh, one of our presenters for Profitability Live. It's where we talk all about money in November. I usually don't mention that in a call like this, but it's a two-day virtual event because talking about money and how much to charge is really hard. And so we've learned yeah. that if we just dedicate two days to it, it's a really safe place. And we do case studies. We have a number, and Lucas is doing a case study, but we have other members that will walk you through their whole process because... It's just an awkward conversation for a lot of people. And um, especially it's, if you it's like still, what you're doing. It's still awkward. Right? It's still awkward. Yeah. I've been in business for 20 years doing only this Mac thing. And, and it's still, I feel, it's hard. It's so hard to talk about still now. And I just, I don't know. Like maybe all it is, it's just, that's just life. I just have that for life. And I figure out strategies for overcoming it. But it is, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we it could is not blame blame your mother, blame your mother, but right. So like what's because I want to help everybody. And so I think sometimes yeah, too, totally. feeling yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I'm gonna help somebody, I shouldn't charge them for it. And I have experienced that, right? Um percent and especially if you really love what you do. A lot of people have said, you know, but I I love doing this. I love making albums for somebody, right? Some people will say, like, I love designing photo books, so I'm I feel bad charging all this money because I love it. Well, the other person doesn't love it, right? So it's it's yeah. a it's a mindset thing for sure. Um, and, and maybe that's the answer. Maybe I'm solving two problems at once talking about this because the printers and the Microsoft Exchange is $400 an hour. You have no problem with that, I bet, right? No, no problem. <laughs> I'll do your printers and Microsoft Exchange for $400 an hour. Absolutely. Totally happy to do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's interesting, right? Because you don't care. <laughs> you know, you'd rather, if you're willing to pay me that, I'll, I'll bang my, I'll hit myself over the head with a, with a sharp yep. stick for $400 an hour, right? Um, all right, next question too is, I always find this an interesting question I like to ask because I think people underestimate their past life work experience skills that especially as an, an entrepreneurial journey, it took me a long time to really start to put together why things I was succeeding in some areas, maybe not doing as well as others, but I started realizing, wow, that job that I had in my 20s, I'm actually using some of that now, you know, 20, 30 years later, or that experience. Yeah. I try and teach my kids that a lot, like take that job because you know what, you're going to learn something in these six months a year that you're there that you will use someday in your life. So what would you say to that? Is there, and so that people can have a vision to realize it's true. okay if you've never been yeah. a photo you know, tech guru, computer guru before, there's skills that you're bringing to the table to help you be successful. Yeah, a hundred, a hundred percent, a thousand percent, Julie. Like still to this day, people are like, which new Mac should I get? And I'm like drawing on my experience from Mac station and selling computers. People at the, the hosting company that I was at doing domain names and doing uh, email stuff, there were like server and service type problems at that company. And so a lot of what, a, a lot of my job was damage control. Uh, pissed off customers. You know, my website is down. My old my my website my whole website just got deleted. I don't and you don't have a backup. You know, I'm taking this to legal and and so like I uh, part of my job there was to to field damage control requests. And so now like the problems that we get in my company, I'm like, ha, huh, this is cute. This is a cute little nothing problem. Uh, you know, <laughs> compared to what I was dealing with at NetNation and and Hostway. Um, but also the, the volume of support, you know, like we, we were pushing, I think it was between 100 and 130 tickets, like email responses per day. So that's like, that's high volume, you know, tech support. So now when I get 20 email requests per day or I get text messages, it's just not a thing. Like I'm like, it's just the norm for me. Um, going, going back further, I got into fixing Macs when I had my first Mac and we would all, it was the beige ones that I had an LC 575 and we would carry our computers to an office and we'd play video games against each other. Uh, me and, you know, 10 people, we call it a LAN party. I bet some of the people here know what that is. Um, but my Mac was always the one that was having trouble joining the network. I could never get into the games because I was always tinkering with my computer. So I got really good and really quick at fixing my Mac because I was so motivated to like play game, you know, join the game. And so I had to like reinstall my whole system super quickly, erase the hard drive, you know, back it all up, erase the hard drive, reinstall the system in order to play games really quickly. Um, I, and I definitely, the, the upbringing, just me and my mom, my mom has really high EQ uh, and that upbringing has really been a superpower for me in in this work, uh, just just being able to uh, speak the language of emotion, and, and and I I really understand and empathize with people's fear of the cloud, and their fear of losing data, and their fear of holy shit, the thing that I was just working on is gone. What like? Let me you know. I, me I, this. This I, I know it just moved. It just moved. I want to hear your gone. I want to hear your like your elevator pitch in some ways, because it's been really helpful. People say, you know, in the photo space, because that, you know, so we try to tell our members as you're thinking about photo organizing or photo management or whatever is what you do, but that's not what people buy, right? Because you're, and so what, how do you explain the emotion, like the fact that you understand the EQ piece of it? So when somebody is asking you about their photos, like, what is it that you understand intuitively and how do you, just curious how you address that? You probably don't say, well, you have lots of digital data you know, on your phone, you, you know, what is it, do you use language about why those photos matter or why, why do you know that they care about those? Uh, does that make sense? What I'm asking? I don't, yeah, I don't fully understand the, the question. So you mean, you mean like, if you were signing up that you're, you're doing your 30 second elevator pitch and it could be like, I, no. I organize, I help people organize their photos is not really very, I would say it's kind of like saying I watch yeah. paint dry, right? There's nothing yeah. exciting about that because you're not, connecting with the why the photos matter. Yeah, yeah I, I always found the best success, especially in networking groups, would be uh, raise everybody raise your hand if you feel like you who feels like you have too many photos? Raise your, you know, raise your hand. And then, and then I'm like, that's I, I help you with that. And I'll help you stop feeling like that because it's not a problem. I'll make things nice and organized and you can keep 
all the photos and have, you know, never delete any. So I find, first I find people who have the pain point and then, you know, address the pain point, that yeah. kind of thing. And you use that humor and you use that ability to, uh, yeah, use that in that EQ probably, right, to to know that they feel bad about their pain point, right? And then when you they, they see other yep. hands in the room, then all of a sudden people go, I'm not telling what it was that. Yeah, you know, but, right? I, but I learned but I learned that because of BNI. Like, I didn't start BNI. When I first started the networking thing, I had no idea what to say. And I saw other people doing that type of stuff. And I was like, ooh, that's good. Um, and so some of, some of that was just learning that way. But now, because I get most of my clients from my YouTube videos now, and, you know, some of them are, the videos are the Max Shame, you know, Max Shame series, people come to me already, I don't need to pitch, people come to me already knowing that I'm kind and understanding, and I will help them with their total chaos, you know, problem, that kind of thing. Um, but the, sh the short answer to your question is I actually don't, I don't know, I don't have and it's, I mean, it's something I want. Like, I want to be able to say in two, one, I want one punchy little sentence that says, I help, uh, I help people, uh, I help people who feel like they have too many photos get their photos under control. I don't, maybe, I don't know. Like, I, I, I'm, I just came up with that on the spot. It's, I would have to, I, but I, I would like, I would hire a market, you know, a, a business coach or something to, <laughs> to like help me with it. <laughs> Oh, that's um, great. But when it, uh, uh, one thing I will say though, I did um, I did a survey once, like because I was trying to figure out, you know, how to explain my service to to people, and a business coach told me to go up to my ten best clients and ask them three questions. This was huge for me because for a long time I was like I was trying to teach people Mac, and and I was finding people wouldn't get back to me. I was trying to get people interested in you know Mac and shortcuts and all this stuff. Nobody cared. So I went up to my 10 best clients and this was Evan Horowitz, uh, ehadvising.com. Eh I don't know if he's still doing this, but whatever. The questions were, uh, ask your clients, what problem did they hire you to solve? Uh, what benefit did they get from my work? And why were those benefits important to them? And I have to tell you, it was the most mm -hmm. humbling. It was the biggest piece of humble pie I have ever eaten in my life because every single person of them, every single one of them said, I had a problem, you solved the problem, and now I don't have to think about it anymore. Hmm. And I was like, no, but but I but I want everybody to love Mac as much as I love Mac. No, they hmm. don't care. They don't give a bleep about their computer or whatever. They just want the problem to go away so that the Mac, the computer is no longer an obstacle to them. So my job became, and, and my marketing, all of my marketing changed. I was like, we take we take the tech problems off your mind. We 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 make it so you don't feel bad about the thing anymore because it's solved and you don't need to think about it. It's off your mind. You on your mind, you can have other things like planning your daughter's wedding or whatever. Like you don't need to be thinking about computer problems. So yeah. I, I would probably do like if I was gonna that's do a, a great, photo. That's a great nugget right there. I think that's a really good yeah. It was it was huge. It was huge for me. Like every even to this day. I still use that language. I'm like, I'll, I'll text people a little check-in. I haven't talked to them in a couple of years. I would just text them and say, hey, do you have any computer things on your mind that you would like off your mind? And they're like, oh yeah, but, 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 but big list. So. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Well, I know we got comments and questions. So one last thing I always have to ask too, because if you're interested in becoming a, learn about the photo managers, joining our uh, membership association, we'd love to welcome you. And uh, Lucas is a member. And so, uh, been over a little over a year now, and so just curious yep. to share your feedback on what it's been like to to find this community of uh, in this space, not just Mac, but you know. Um, oh, it's been that... it's been awesome. It's been awesome. Like I um all like money the money is taken care of. I've, I had three clients through referrals who who have uh, it's been four x my membership. So like you know the the cost is paid for. Um, but I think the the biggest thing for me is just like holy crap. There are some actual real pros here. It's like the, the culture and community of knowledge that I didn't even know existed. And now like, I don't actually do, I don't do the curating and the organizing. I don't do the, I won't make decisions about this photo is better than this photo. I don't do any of it. I don't touch that. You know, if somebody wants me to make a photo book for them, I don't do that. I don't touch that. I will, I would send them, you know, to people. I would send them to photo managers and, and it's awesome to have, that group, you know, the, that structure. Uh, 
and, and just most most of my interactions are with the photo managers group is the Facebook group and um, the, the Canadian Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. And I'm just I'm learning a ton. Every video that I've made since uh, joining the photo managers, I've, I've done a bunch of photo videos since joining the photo managers. Those videos are better because of what I'm seeing, the questions that I'm seeing and the answers from other members. So it's like it's really an amazing hive hive mind uh, community, you know, community culture. Very, very good. Smart people. Great, thank you. Yeah, I agree. It's all uh, good. Good. Good work. Good work, Kathy and, and your team. I I don't I know what it takes to create a, a small team, and you've created a big one. And it's you know, good job. It's really yeah, fantastic. Thank Thanks. We love having you. It's been great having your resources. So, um, so questions, Isabel. Do you have, have questions come in for people, um, or more more comments at this point? And so, if you have questions for Lucas, go ahead and drop them in the chat. Um, yeah, so as far as uh, there's a question about photo organizing and whether you do that specifically or only on the Apple ecosystem. Yeah, I only do Mac, but but um, like people would come to me with a, you know, a PC or, or a PC hard drive or something like that. And, and I would take those those files and bring them into the Apple ecosystem. I mean, my 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 photos, I I way before iPhoto, way before, you know, like I was using graphic converter uh, and, you know, files and folders to organize my photos. So like I under, I'm i good with files and folders. I'm fine with Windows. I just don't like it. I don't want to do it. Um, so my, my specialty by choice is the photos environment, the iCloud photos environment. Um, I'm just not the I'm not the right fit to help with any any other anything else. I understand Lightroom and, and I have a lot of clients who use Lightroom. I know the basics of getting the, you know, the folders and the structure in, in place, but I would not call myself a Lightroom professional. I, I, do, I would call myself a file and folder hierarchy professional. I'm very, I really understand files and folders and, and you know, how to move things around and shortcuts for doing that, like all that type of stuff. Um, but my, my jam, my, my specialty is the Apple Photos app, you know, having the Photos app on your, on your phone, iCloud storage. How does the storage work? Nobody understands the optimized Mac storage thing. Nobody understands optimized iPhone storage, and that's normal. I'll help you understand it. <laughs> so. um, you don't have a question, Isabel? Before I know there's another one, but it just came in and out of my mind about. Oh, you know, I had a question for you too. If a client came to you though with, um, so you're, you know, you put their whole Apple system in place, but they have lots of scan photos that are they have you know, analog yep. photos that they want to be merged into their Apple library. Do you, what do you do with that? Does that come up or not? Or yeah, a lot it? of, yeah, I, I would do that. A lot of what I'm doing is the, the kind of round it all up and get it into one library. Like okay. you know, the big, the big photo hu hug, you know, I, I only, yeah. just because I saw myself on the camera doing this and it kind of looks like a hug, but that's what I get everything that's into the photos. That's much better than the photo hub. <laughs> it's the photo hug. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. New way of calling um, it, yeah. Okay. And, and and thanks to this group, I learned about the um, a better finder attributes and, and how metadata works and the importance of getting metadata in. And so we've had some uh, clients, one of our one of our biggest projects in the last year was a guy who's like, you know, can you get all of these photos into one place? When can you, how much how much of this can you do for $10,000? And I was like, probably a lot. But like, you know, 10, 10 grand is a good amount. Of, we'll, we'll probably be able to get it all for you know, $10,000. And he, he gave us camcorders, SD cards, hard drives, multiple hard drives, you know, I think they had three different photos libraries, they had an old iPad with photos on it. That's, that's our jam, we will round, round it all up all into one place, uh, deduplicate that kind of thing. But then in terms of actually putting things into albums, I will teach you, I will teach the client how to make albums, I'll teach you how uh, favorites works and how that syncs, and I'll teach you and some and sometimes you need to do technical fixing type stuff to get the people set up correctly because it relates to contacts and the contact syncing uh, places and on and having photos show up on the map. There's some technical fixing there because you have to turn on location services on the phone. But then people are like scared because they're like, well, my phone's going to know where I am at all times. And I'm like, haha, it already does. Uh, but <laughs> but I'll, I'll explain, you know, I'll teach how that location services and, you know, stuff works. And, and I, I have a client who I taught her how to edit the locations in her photos and she went backwards through all her trips and edited the location on her photos and, and then she actually 
uh, zoomed out and took um, a screenshot of the map with all the like clusters of photos on on the map and printed that and framed that. And I just thought that was so cool. It's kind of like the the digital version. I always love the the world map that has the pins in it, you know, for for mm. where you've where you've been. Um, but like I'll what I'm doing is more the teaching and the technical aspect of get everything into one library uh, and then, you know, get, get you teach, teach a man, teach a man to fish, teach a person to fish, make sure you know how to do, you know, favorites and stuff like not many people know about just doing using arrow keys left, right in the, in the photos app. And you press the period key period to mark it, mark something as a favorite. Boom. It has a heart on it. Now it shows up in your favorites section. Like people are usually pretty stoked just about that one little thing. So. Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I already <laughs> learned something new. Okay, I, gotta, I gotta go check that. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Um, the next is question next? is: um, Do you charge the same rates for Mac setup as you do for photo organizing? I do. Yeah, because it's I'm just doing Mac. I'm helping them with their Mac. Um, and so, but I, I would say the difference is, you know, a new Mac setup, if I'm setting, doing a custom build, you know, somebody wants, somebody wants to leave their, their five past lives behind and they want their new Mac set up clean with only the things they care about. That's usually four or five hours all, all at once or over two days, you know, something like that. Photo projects. I'm working with somebody right now. She, she, for the last 19 years, well, I mean, I mean but she she has created separate photos libraries separate iPhoto libraries for each year and she converted them all to photos libraries and now i'm talking to her about every three days for what's what's the you know three days 20 photo every three days 20 photo libraries and we do a 15 minute call where i just connect to her computer i set this one to upload into icloud and that's just a 15 minute charge um so it's more it's like, kind of like some photo projects are more like three or four weeks of work and we talk you know two or three times that week and it's only a 15 minute charge or a 30 minute charge instead of new max setup is five hours you know whatever um yeah. so I, I do charge the same i charge the same rate but the billing structure is kind of different where like i'll do shorter instances over a long time or do everything kind of quickly as a as a overhaul I'm sure that part of building that trust with those clients too is that you know a 15 minute charge is a lot easier to take you know say oh he's only charging me you know you get, yeah that 15 minute time blocks I'm sure builds that trust when when the time comes when it's a bigger time block they're they understand that. totally so, yeah and that's that's one of the biggest things I found this from my YouTube videos is I get a lot of and, and I think have earned a lot of trust by just how I am on video um, and that that to me is extremely precious and valuable and even fragile like I don't like I'm really careful with uh you know if, if people want help with their passwords I'm like if, if you want help with your banking passwords we're gonna you're gonna be doing that and, and I'll show you how to do that you know your other ones we'll, we'll do those together but like it, it's really it, I'm, I'm really careful with that I will say I will say, and you, you probably have all relate, can all relate to this, that I have seen more naked and sex photos than you, most people would want to see in their lives. I, I talk about this with my wife that I kind of feel like, uh, I, I need to be sort of like a, a doctor in the sense that like, yeah, yeah, you've got a photo of that mole on your, a really zoomed in close up photo of that mole on your arm. You have that. Everybody has that. Let's just keep scrolling. We'll scroll past it. <laughs> oh, totally fine. You know? Yes, yeah. I just saw your pe your penis there. That was your. You know, I just didn't. We'll keep scrolling. Everybody has one. We're all human. Um, that's. I mean, you know, it's funny. My son is doing this now. He told me a story about his girl, his uh, fiance, but she's going to be his wife, and yelled. Jump! So he converts home movies, and uh, I guess he had it set up and. In the living room, and you know, she's pretty appalled by what suddenly she saw in the whole movie thing. So, uh, we got. I see. I yeah, see it. Just what one, what one quick thing. I just see it as an opportunity. I have command L. Command L means hide photo. It goes into the hidden photo library, pulls it out of your uh, pulls it out of your main library. You know. And I, so I teach them that. I'm like, just so you know, you can do command L on that photo. It'll go bye bye. <laughs> All right. Well, Pat, that was a good question. Well, that last question here is: There still time? Yes. We'll ask one more question. So you know the so Apple software so in and out. What is your feeling about what they're going to be doing in the next few years? Got a magic uh, 
I was, I had goosebumps from the, the Apple Vision video. I was like, oh my God, this, like, I don't even, I've, I've, for the last, I've even done like a bunch of thinking and brainstorming and journaling of like what, th what that could mean and what that could do for technology. Like this is, you know, this big clunky headset that people wear, it's very isolating and very, you know, you're, it's, it's weird. It's sort of from the future. It's, you know, cr it's creepy, whatever, like all that stuff. But yeah, but when you go, when you go in there, like people, like I was thinking about the, the uses for that people could, you, 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 you don't like your environment. You're in a cubicle, you get bad vibes from where you're working and, but that you don't have a choice. You have to work there. You, you put on this headset, you get transported. You can sit by a lake. You've just got, you know, you got the ambient sounds of nature around you and you've got Safari open in front of you. You've got email open over here. You know, you've got your photos open over here, wh whatever. Like, I don't, I was, my brain is exploding at the possibilities for like what a VR, AR, that stuff is coming. Like it's, it's coming quickly now because what I saw in that video from Apple, mm -hmm is they they're bringing uh technology that's probably 10 years in the future they're bringing it to now so like yeah we're, there's photos photos will never photos will always be precious to people i don't think that's ever going to change so you know stay stay sharp stay good at photos i recommend really learning even if you're like die hard windows only all windows all the time i recommend learning you know learning mac learning icloud learning some of the technical bits of how it works because it's 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 inexorable it's coming you know the the, the 3d the the vr well, that's coming yeah yeah you had a good point when you posted something about um job security in a way for photo managers because you know if you're gonna be able yep. to interact with your photos like that you're not going to want every photo you ever took and then um then also the fear of like what does it do to our um, to our kids? We're already worried about the devices, but we can't worry about that. That's that's kids. terrifying. Yeah, I'm, I, yeah, it's yeah. like everything can be terrifying at this point in the world. So, um, yeah. this was fascinating. What a great job, Lucas! Really, I think if we could give you a round of applause, everybody would. Everybody said, "What an inspiring Friday afternoon!" So, great information, great presentation. Oh, thank you. Love your energy, and um, so thank you so much, everybody. Thrilled that you joined you. us. That's and, been, uh, it's been an honor. I'm, I'm glad you invited me. And please, you know, message me, ask me questions, whatever. I'm, I, I'm happy, to, your, happy to help. Your, yeah, people looking at your, uh, that, they, that they weren't following you on YouTube, but I'm sure they are now. So, all right, awesome. everybody, thanks so much. Until next month, uh, really enjoyed having you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.